Hey there, this is the Spyderco Endura 4 that I'm looking at today. This is model number C10SBK. Uh, the S in that model number standing for serrated or spider edge, which is what this model is. We've got about 90% of the blade is serrated and then that last little smidge in that last little 10% or so is plain edge. And that is a uh, chisel ground blade. So that primary cutting edge is only ground on one side. And uh, this knife is brand new. I bought it two days ago from a gentleman locally who had never used it before, sold it to me brand new in the box. And you might be wondering why I'm making a review of a two-day-old knife. Well, in fact, I've actually owned several Enduras over the years, this one just being the newest one. And I'm very familiar with the with the steel used in them, the handle shape, the design, the functionality of it. And uh, just as a fun little related item, here's an older Endura. I think this is a Generation 2, I'm not completely sure. It does have the molded integrated plastic pocket clip there. This one's actually a little bit smaller in size. Handle shape's a little bit different, it's a little bit smaller, but here's what's kind of interesting, a little fun. Check out this blade. I bought this at a yard sale a while back. Actually, I didn't even buy it. That's not true. I actually asked the guy how much it was, and when he saw what it was I was holding up, he took one look at it and said I could have it. And no doubt it's because of how useless the blade is in its current uh, configuration. I'll need to sharpen it or send it in or something, but I just never have. I just thought it was fun to take it home and, and check it out and look at something that somebody definitely got some use out of. But that's an oldie. It's got the older style lock. It doesn't have the dent in it yet. And it's a shorter handle. It's a shorter blade. And now it's definitely a sh shorter blade because somebody's really worked at that tip and really ground it down by cutting whatever it was that they cut. Well loved and it still holds up to this day. This one is uh, AUS8. And I don't know if it'll zoom in on that. There it goes. But, uh, alright, we spent enough time talking about that one. Let's move that out of the way. So, uh, once again, this is the Endura 4 with the Spider Edge. Blade length, 3.75 inches, according to Spyderco, and overall length of 8.75 inches. And that all checks out. Measured it myself, and it is on the nose. Also, right on the nose is the weight. Spyderco says it's 3.6 ounces, and my scale says the exact same thing. So very accurate uh, measurements, very light knife, 3.6 ounces with a uh, 3 and 3 quarter inch blade is, you're getting a lot. It's a nice thick stock on it too. Uh, the type of steel used in this blade is Spyderco's VG10, uh, and they do their VG10 right. It is excellent, and you cannot go wrong with one of these value knives here. Handle material, FRN which if you don't know stands for fiberglass reinforced nylon and of course we are looking at a painted black pocket clip and this is fully ambidextrous it is uh, four-way positionable so lefties rejoice you can lefties and righties can do tip up tip down and if you do go tip up you can see that the lanyard hole on this clip goes right through. It goes right through the handle and the clip. So you can run your lanyard through there and it doesn't obstruct it in any way. Kind of a neat little thing that's been integrated in there. Blade shape is a little unique. As with uh, almost all of Spyderco's blade designs, it's all, sometimes it's kind of pin, hard to pinpoint a name. Uh, some, some people refer to these as spear point. I suppose I'd say it's drop point, but um, it's the Endura shape. <laughs> If you're familiar with these at all, they've, they've used a pretty similar design all over the years, although with this most recent generation, with the Generation 4, they've kind of dropped the tip of the knife down. It used to come straight out to a point, and now they've kind of curved it, which I think is you know basically to reinforce and strengthen the tip to put a little bit more metal behind it so people have less tips being broken off. Uh, does it have liners? It does. It has stainless steel liners. You probably can't see them in there too well, but they are skeletonized. They're milled out. So it makes it lighter, but it does reinforce the, the handle nicely, and it does feel strong. Um, we've got serrations or jimping on the blade ramp, and we've also got them on the spine of the handle, and they're all very effective. Holds your thumb 
or your finger in place very well. So pleased to see those on there. Um, they're not always a deal breaker for me. Actually, they're not really a deal breaker for me at all, but they're nice and they're very effective, very functional on this knife. Um, it's got some great texturing on the handle. It's not so aggressive that it hurts your fingers or your palm, but it is aggressive enough to where you get a very firm grip and it won't move if you don't want it to. Works well barehanded or with gloves. So that's always excellent for those of us that are working outside and we're using gloves all day, which I do at one of my jobs. Um, balance is a little forward heavy to me. It's, it's still pretty even overall, but it tends to, I kind of feel like it's a little blade heavy, but that's okay, it's, it's not a problem. Uh, just something of note. Carries uh, very slim in the pocket, and it's you know it's got a really slim profile, and it does stick up a bit. You know it's not one of the lowest profile clips that I've seen. I don't care one way or the other as long as it's not sticking out so much that it gets knocked out of my pocket. I'm not worried about hiding it, but you will get about an inch, a little shy of an inch, sticking up past the edge of your pocket. So something to keep in mind. Of course, we got Spyderco's excellent round opening hole which makes opening the knife a snap and uh, what you see what I did there is uh, touch on that lock back which it is a lock back design or back lock whichever you prefer some people call it a mid lock but you can kinda push on that back lock and then give the blade a shake and then with your finger to keep it from dropping all the way down you kinda catch it and move your fingers and close it the rest of the way so that's kinda handy nice little one handed opening and one-handed closing. Blade centering in the handle, perfect. Very well centered. Uh, no wobble or wiggling to speak, speak of, no play. It's very, very solid. For the handles being as squishy and as soft, well, okay, I don't want to say squishy, but for as soft and pliable as the plastic can be, um, it's, it's really firm. The blade doesn't want to wobble in any direction. There's no noise, no rattling or anything. So it locks up great. And I have every confidence in both the, the lock and the handle design in the blade, in the blade shape, shape and strength. Um, it's all just great. I have no worries. And I've used an Endura for years and I, uh, I've been really happy with it. I don't foresee any, any failures ever. And in fact, I haven't heard about too many, if any at all. Um, I do love the design. I like the look of it. The fit and finish is about as good as, as a plastic handled knife, an FRN or Zytel, that type of you know, material. Um, it's about as, it, as good as it can be. And I think that the, the blade has been ground very well. There's not too many you know, defects here and there. It's not perfect. You know, it's not, we're not talking a $200 or $300 knife, but um, you know, for the $50, $60 that they go for right now, I think it's amazing just how well finished it is, just, just how good of a job they've done. Um, you know what it's designed for some people are going to say uh of course people say knives are very you know for tactical uses and you know i suppose it could do that i, I suppose it could hold up uh performing that way but that's not what i've used my for and to me it's really it's a utility blade it's it's an all-around general purpose knife um if you're familiar with spider co you probably know they also have the delica line which is basically a shrunk down version of the Endura and vice versa. Um, it's got a just shy of three inch blade on it, but handle shape and blade design are very similar. And I think this is just a bigger version of the Delica for someone that needs a little bit more reach or just wants a little bit more belly on the blade. So sure, you know, it's sharp. You could poke someone or something with it. But for me, it's just a wonderful all around do it all kind of knife. And uh, I think that anybody who purchases one for just about any purpose will be very happy. And I think it'll be well suited in just about any role. Uh, overall, my opinion of Spyderco is quite high. I don't think of myself as a fanboy, and I hope I don't come across as that. Uh, but they're great. I remember when I bought my first Endura, it was actually the stainless steel model with the AUS 6 blade, AUS 6 steel. Uh, back in 2003, and I remember when I bought it, I was on one of the online forums, and I came on to make a comment about how I was excited about my new purchase, and Sal Glesser, uh, president and uh, of, of Spyderco, came online and just gave a little post to say hi and thanks for buying it, and that uh, he thought I was going to be really happy with it, and that just really impressed me, and I think that right there started a really good basis for, you know, my uh, customer and company relationship with Spyderco and you can 
If you hear that thundering noise in the background, that's my cats. They're all playing, running around in circles. Sometime I'll throw up a video of them so you guys can see them. Uh, but I've just been really happy with Spyderco. I really like I like what they the way they stand behind their products. And when it comes to integrity in the knife industry, I think that Spyderco really can't be surpassed. They're just great people. Their customer service is excellent. Anytime I've ever had any warranty issues, they've just been very quick to respond and just super courteous, super polite, super friendly, very honest people. And you know, honesty in the knife industry is it's not always really common. And I'm very happy to say that Spyderco has always been above reproach in that regard. Value on this knife, tremendous, very high value. For the $50 to $60 that you're going to pay for an Endura, um, you, you almost just can't do better. Uh, people that buy Enduras have them, you know, for 10, 12, 15 years uh, before they need to be replaced. They sharpen great. The VG10 steel that they've been using on them for the past several years is, is well, at least on the FRN models, is excellent. It's, it's a very good performer. Um, you know, as far as how often you're going to be sharpening it, we're not talking a super steel. At least nowadays, VG10 is kind of considered, you know, mid to mid-high uh, when it comes to today's steels. But just overall performance, overall sharpening, you know, it, with regular use, it's going to be about your, what you should what you should expect on average. You know, maybe twice a month. If you're stropping it, probably not even that. Maybe once enough for a quick touch up on your sharpening stone, but otherwise, you know, a strop maybe once a day or even if you're not using your knife much, once a week and you should expect outstanding things from it. Um, in that in that way, when it comes to sharpening that VG10, I think that it's one of the better steels, and I think Spyderco's heat treat on VG10 is remarkable. Uh, quick little comparison to some other knives. There's my Tenacious, which is actually grubby. I need to clean that. But just to give you a size comparison, there's a common one. Spyderco Tenacious. Another Spyderco. There's a paramilitary. Kind of shows you how it fits in there. About, about just about the exact same size as the handle on the paramilitary too, but obviously a longer blade, narrower as well. And uh, let's move these guys out of the way and take a look at there's a Victorinox Deluxe Tinker. Let me close this one, kind of give you an idea. And uh, it does have that, like we talked about before, that lock back or back lock design, and this one has that Boyd dent. So it's kind of notched out, which is actually so that when you squeeze it, you don't have as much of an opportunity to accidentally squeeze that and disengage the lock. And even with the older style that just had the straight piece, like that other one that I showed you, I've never had that problem. So don't worry too much about it at all. I doubt you'll ever run into that. Uh, but let me close this one up and show you next to the Victorinox, give you an idea of the size. This is that larger type Swiss Army knife that a lot of you probably own. And... Uh, as far as the sharpness out of the box, it's perfect, 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 just like we expect from Spyderco every time. They've got a reputation for, you know, extremely, extremely sharp knives right out of the box, and this one is no exception. So there's the old common paper cut and test. What's this? Oh, a little OD green paracord pops right through that although just about any knife you know straight from the factory is going to cut that kind of stuff really well but I think we all like to see a little bit of performance on camera once in a while just for fun and it just kind of leaps right through so that's about it you know I've used my Endura for just about everything whittling wood cutting plastic straps and I, sh I should make a note on that when you got this spider edge like we have here this thing really excels at cutting through some of the thicker, more fibrous material, tougher stuff. So a plain edge is going to be great for all around tasks, but when you really need to rip into stuff, guys that are you know, cutting through carpeting, guys that are tearing through drywall, plastic straps, rope, paracord, if you're cutting that kind of stuff all day long, you know, bailing twine, um, that edge is going to really bite and rip through there. And it can be sharpened. Uh, I don't carry a lot of combo edge or serrated edge knives because I don't like sharpening the serrations and I don't like the way they look over time when they get worn but uh, the, it'll go a long time between sharpenings with that edge type so expect to cut through the heavier stuff if you got some hard duty tasks that you need a you know a really aggressive edge to bite through Spyderco's Spider Edge is going to be the one that you're looking for 
So that's it. That's my overall views on this knife. This video's probably gone on way too long. Um, I, again, you know, thanks for taking the time to watch, and I hope to share some more with you soon. Bye.